Ganga Action Plan was first launched by Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi in 1985. Since then, the plan has seen two extensions and an expenditure of thousands of crores of rupees, but the Ganga River has remained dirty. The Manmohan Singh government junked the previous two failed Ganga Action Plans and set up a new body. The National Ganga River Basin Authority in 2009, after being re-elected, it allocated 7,000 crore under the new Ganga project. Fast forward to 2016, the river is still dirty, if not dirtier. The main problem with keeping the Ganga clean is that the runoff from the millions of tons of fertilizers and thousands of tons of pesticides used in agriculture goes directly into the river. Three-fourths of the pollution in the Ganga can be accounted for by municipal sewage from the cities, towns and villages located along its banks. Understandably, various action plans in the past have focused on setting up sewage treatment plants on priority basis. Ironically, this has been one of the biggest failures associated with these plans. A recent article published in Economic and Political Weekly on all that allies and Ganga action plans details how one of the main problems with these plans is the bad manner in which the STPs were planned and executed. Here are some of the key problems associated with the treatment plans. Some of them are funny as they are tragic. Number 1. Inadequate Capacity Building Under Phase 1 of the Ganga Action Plan, the sewage estimates were based on population and water supply rate. The sewage generation assumed to be 80% of the water supplied. The criterion was thought and led to an overestimation and in some cases underestimation of the amount of sewage at different places. For instance, the estimate for Varanasi came up to around 200 meat sewage, but this did not include the 50 meat sewage in released into the river Varuna, which finally joins the river Ganga. Similarly, the sewage estimation of 70 meat in Noida did not include the sewage release in Shraddha drain, which discharged 404 meat sewage in Yamuna. Number 2. No power to run the STPs 24-7 power feeding is essential for round-the-clock functioning of the STPs. However, this aspect was ignored during the building of these plants. Many of them didn't have even basic power facilities. Where they were present, STPs were rendered difunctional due to frequent power cuts. For example, the municipal STP near Jammu, Kanpur kept discharging untreated water into the Ganga because of power cuts. The generator installed at this facility was found to be inadequate to operate the plant. How can STPs work if the facility for power is not even taken into account? Faulty Planning In many places, sewage treatment plants were simply not effective in treating the effluents. The inefficiency can be attributed to many factors including lack of power supply as explained above, but it does appear that there were some real disasters at the design level. In Kanpur, for instance, the pumping station at Sisimau remained idle because bad alignment rendered gravity sewers incapable of carrying the discharge to the river. Essentially, what this means is that the treatment plant was established at a lower point on the slope than the Ganga. One can imagine how such faulty planning could have affected the overall plan negatively. Now, the Narendra Modi government has launched its own Namami Gange program to clean up the Ganga river ecosystem. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has pledged of 20,000 crore to be spent for this project in the next five years. This is five times the total expenditure made up so far under the Ganga action plans. Hopefully, all this money will be spent well and lessons learned from the failures discussed above.